Hi, uh, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, far away in Westboro. Um, but this is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the library or on, online, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means if that's Northborough, that means right here. They don't want to go to Marlboro where I live. They don't want to go to Seattle where their kids are. They want to be right here. So the point of the show is to let you know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here for the rest of your life. So um, with, with me is Liz Tridiak, who has been your new, but you've probably still never seen her in person, Council on Aging Director, who showed up, I think, the month of, of COVID. It was like April or March, right? It was like right at the beginning. April. April. And she was just talking about fantasizing about meeting you all and giving you a hug. She was like, I can't believe I got all these seniors I've talked to. I've never been able to actually <laughs> hug one. Right. So but and so she's getting close. She's got a great guest. I actually this person who has become like a veteran here in Northborough. I think we first had her on four months ago when she was starting. Not not that long ago. Right. I think so. Who, who, so who do we have? And and we're talking about an exciting topic that everybody is on everybody's lips. What are we talking about today? Well, first, this is Kristen Black. She's our fabulous new Board of Health agent here in Northborough. She came on in the fall and she has she's just been so phenomenal. Kristen, I can't give you enough credit. You came on board and you were in front of the Board of Selectmen. You were doing presentations giving us new information, updating all the website. You, you've just been doing such an incredible job. We're so lucky to have you here. Um, that being said, I was fantasizing about having this huge welcome back celebration here at the Senior Center with a band and music and food and catering and hugs. And you said, no, no hugs yet. So <laughs> we're kind of still in this holding pattern, but the vaccines are here. There's some that have been rolling out already. So I was just hoping that you could tell us a little bit about what's going on here in Northborough with COVID and um, what's been your main focus lately. Great. Hi, Liz and Arthur. Thanks so much for welcoming me back. I officially started. Yeah, it was October. So I guess, yeah, was that four months? It's it's flying. Um, and we are really in the thick of things right now with vaccine planning. And so the great news today our um, fabulous fire chief, Parente, um, received his vaccine. And so our first responders um, were all part of that program. Um, and so they're really high up on the list and they um, were part of a regional program hosted through Westboro, you know, the towns of Southboro and a few others were involved. I think it was four to five towns. And so all of our first responders um, entered um, that it's a Moderna vaccine they're receiving, and 28 days later, they'll be scheduling that second dose. Again, all with the um, great support and help of um, the town of Westboro and their fabulous health department and fire department. So big thanks there. Good news. Um, I know we had great participation over over 80 percent, um, maybe well over 90 percent of our first responders um, took the took advantage of that opportunity. That's and so. Wow. Yeah, now we'll be moving. We'll be moving through our list to say really who's next. Um, you'll also be happy to know that the long-term care or assisted living facilities in town, so Coleman Health, Beaumont, um, and Whitney Place, they also received their vaccine, um, or they'll be receiving it this week, the first dose, and things like that. So that was all scheduled um, through CVS and a federal um, grant. Uh, it was federally distributed through CBS. And so the staff and residents in those locations have received the vaccine. So yeah, and now we're sort of moving on into our next tier. And um, for I think for our seniors in town, um, really next on the tier of people you'll know and hear about, and we want you to help to spread the word is all the, anyone who's providing home-based care services. So if you have a visiting nurse or um, a personal care attendant who comes in or even uh, Meals on Wheels, you know, delivery driver who would come into a home, all of those individuals are really next on that tier. So we are still uh, at the phase one um, stage. And then um, beginning as early as February is the estimate for the state will move on to phase two. And that's where our seniors, anybody 75 or over is right at the top of the list or anybody with two or more comorbidities, 
Uh, everyone says, what are those? It's a big long list on the CDC website. So we're, we're quickly um, gearing up. <laughs> That's such great uh, news. Yeah. That is. So can you, can you talk about <clears throat> kind of the, the, the logistics of it? Because once again, this is going to happen really fast. It's like February. And I wasn't even thinking about the logistics, but then I did this, I did this show. One of the other shows I do is in Nantucket and they were explaining it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so complicated because when you think, so everybody over 75, that's a lot of people. So how do you, you know, how do you find those, those people? How do they, where, you know, where do they go? Who, who gets in line, who sets up the line? How, how does, how does that actually play out? And where do you go in, in, in Nantucket? It's simple. Because every everybody goes to the same place, you know they're all going to the hospital, right? Um, <laughs> because there's one hospital, and there's you know it's a small population. So kind of how is how is that working? So um, actually, as we speak, Liz and I were back and forth today. We did just create an online notification form, and Liz can share that. We'll try to put the link up. It's on the town's COVID webpage under uh, news and announcements. So it's a simple link where you can. Fill it out your contact information and you can check the boxes. You know, are you a healthcare worker, forward facing? Are you a healthcare worker, you know, not necessarily working directly um, with COVID patients, but maybe you're a physical therapist working in office, or maybe you're providing home based care. So we have a really a checkoff list on that form, and we want to encourage all residents to sign up because it is um, moving very quickly, and we'll be using that as our notification distribution list. Um, I just spoke to Liz again today. We're likely going to try to produce a mailer, um, as well as using other outreach tools like um, phone, email, text, et cetera, you know, the usual communication methods you'd see from your senior center to let people know um, when the vaccine's available, you know, in, for each particular category. So we are hearing about some statewide vaccination sites. You know, I think you've heard of Gillette, Fenway. Um, I, I think I heard the Big E in Springfield Tops Fair, fail, Fairgrounds. Wow. Um, they will be opening mass vaccination centers. So we're going to see it at that high level, large, large centers run directly through the state. Um, and then you're going to see some smaller clinics as well that are going to be stood up at local um, you know, fire departments, um, et cetera. We're in the process right now of applying with the state to try to be a local center. Um, and we're, you know, that's mostly been my work this week is trying to make sure we have all the approvals and forms. Um, but there's also a possibility we may partner again with a neighboring um, community or communities to really just stand up a, um, a vaccine clinic that would run through phase three. So we don't have all the details. There's going to be multiple, I think that the take home, there's going to be multiple note places to go. It's not going to be everybody in Northborough has to go to this one spot. See, um, you, we may even be learning that your doctor's office would be administering it or CVS's. And, you know, so think eventually we may get to sort of that flu vaccine model where there's a lot of different places to go. Um, and so it's the information's not coming out, you know, as quick as we all want. But like you said, Arthur, I think it's going to, you know, it's going to come real fast. So pay attention if you could fill out that online notification form. And then we're happy to inform you and let you know as soon as that vaccine is available, what documentation you would need to provide um, if you need to have a, you know, your insurance card or fill out a form in advance. And those are all the details we'll be working with and supporting residents um, through that process. Mm -hmm. I see. But so you, so, I'm sorry, Liz, go ahead. Sorry, Arthur. I was just going to jump on and say that if you are a resident and you're calling, um, we here at the Senior Center can help you fill out that form. So if you don't have internet access or you don't have an email, just call us here at the Senior Center. We'll fill out the form for you to make sure you're notified when you're eligible for the vaccine. And the calls today is the 12th of January. And the calls this week have been coming in fast and furious saying that why don't you just do it there at the senior center? And that's a great plan, but it's not just as simple as raising your hand saying, okay, I'm ready to uh, set up a site here, ship the doses out. There's yeah, like you got some big refrigerators, you know? Yeah, we were actually talking about refrigerators and freezers earlier. <laughs> we, where would we get the freezer? Could we check the temperature every hour? It's, it's The logistics of it aren't as simple as just saying you want it. <laughs> It's a process. So, so for Northboro residents, then there are going to be you're going to be notifying them of the places where they may be able to get the vaccine. But then, in terms of their 
setting up with those places, you know, and kind of figuring out where they're going to be on the list there. Because I'm assuming in each of these places, there's going to be a list, there's going to be a, you know, 15 minute per person or whatever in order to be able to do this. Because I'm assuming people aren't going to be outside waiting in line in these places, right? I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine, to, to imagine that's good. That's going to be really intense. That's going to be mm -hmm. really yeah, a lot. The way I work with the Westboro Clinic for our first responders is probably a model that we'll move forward with is um, the state has is using a new program called Prep Mod. It's sort of like registering for any appointment, if you're registering for a massage or whatever, where you'd enter your information and then you pick a time slot. And so we'll likely be scheduling, um, you know, using that type of system. So expect appointments, right? Because we want to maintain social distancing. We want to guarantee your spot. We don't want to put a lot of people in line and crowds waiting all day to get turned away. So um, most of these um, vaccine um, clinics or locations are likely going to be using that, that sign up model. And, and Liz, how many, do you have an approximate number? How many, how many people are over, over 75 or seven, is it over 75 or 75 and over? So if you're 75, Seven, are you, 75 and over, 75 is that and first over. Phase. so yeah. you're in the first tranche. I, it was so funny. I was just talking, it was, we were talking on another one of these shows and I was like, it's so strange. The people are going to be doing fake IDs, you know, to be showing, you know, how, how, well, oh no, I'm really, I'm really 75. <laughs> So, so, so it's 75 and older. So it's 70. It's 75. Yeah, there's 3,800 um, residents over the age of 60 in Northboro. Yeah. And I just requested from the town clerk the listing of um, that listing from the town census so we can narrow it down to who might be eligible and figure out the very best way to reach these people directly to let them know when they're eligible, where to go, and yeah. how to get vaccinated. Because that would be it. That that and it's great that you've got you know because because it's North Bro, so you've got that you've got a pool of volunteers. You've got a great outreach person, mm -hmm. and people dying to do something really. And this is really important, right? To actually be able to reach everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Now, oh, Kristen, do you have um any comments on the safety of vaccines? I know it's kind of coming up in the media, and people have asked us, "This is an experimental vaccine. What does that mean?" Mm -hmm. um, do you have any comments on that for us? Yeah, so I think it's important to note, you know, typically the flu vaccine, things are a little simpler. You know, the flu vaccine's FDA approved. Um, the, the COVID vaccines at this point, because they did, um, they went through the process, uh, you know, a little bit faster than we're used to for sure, right? This was record development of a vaccine in, in a short amount of time. So they're operating under emergency use authorization. For that reason, there's a little bit more paperwork. But on the safety level, the techniques they're using, the, the way this vaccine was developed using the mRNA techniques, those were in the works for quite a while. So it's not like this was technology they first thought up on January 1st when they realized this was a problem in 2020, you know. Um, and so there's a lot of information out there on vaccine safety. Um, if you go to mass.gov forward slash vaccine, um, you can see there's some frequently asked questions and there's some there about safety. Really, all of that safety data explanation of how the vaccines work, are they safe, um, is really housed through the Center for Disease Control or the CDC's website. So um, that information's out there. They're transparent. You know, there were, you know, thousands and thousands of people involved in these studies. Um, I personally, since we've rolled out in Massachusetts haven't been hearing about these adverse reactions everybody's really worried about. Um, and so it, it seems to be going really well. The information's out there on the CDC's website. And so we could provide those links or help you find them. And as always, I'd always recommend you contact your local primary care physician. You know, talk to them about your concerns. Everybody's, you know, personal health care information is unique. It's different. Um, and doctors are there to support you through that and understand your own risk and if this is appropriate for you. That's a great point. And they can and they can explain to you whether you have any comorbidities, right? And and They're I think gonna know, right? Yeah. The comorbidity thing is very interesting because you know, I was just working on that today. And again, right right at the top of that phase two, starting as early as February, is anybody 75 or over or anybody with two or more comorbidities? That list is huge, right? Like you read, you know, cancer and diabetes and you know, you're overweight and high blood pressure and it, it Oh, I, I wow. said to Liz, I joked today, I said, I think I could check a couple boxes, you know, so, you know, have a look at that. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's your health history. 
Um, and, you know, it means you're at higher risk. And there's a reason the state came out with this vaccine plan. So please don't, you know, try to just push it off to the next person. Read that list. If you feel that you've met two or more of those categories, you qualify. And if you're not comfortable about that, call your doctor. Only your doctor could really help you understand um, if you met that list. And so please, please, please don't just say, oh, I didn't need it. I don't have it. The list goes on and on. So I think a lot of people have said to me, I think phase two of this vaccination plan is going to be even bigger than phase three because so many people are going to fall into those categories. So it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing, you know, to say, no, I, you know, but I'm young and I want to stand back. If you meet the requirement, there's a reason the plan was designed this way. We want everybody to be, you know, as safe as possible. We want to get through this. So you're not helping the you know, healthcare system to not identify your comorbidities, not get the vaccine, right? Like we want to make sure we relieve our hospitals of the um, of the burden of patients. And so if you can get the vaccine sooner, less likely you would need to go to a hospital. So you're helping everybody. So please read that list. Um, and that is linked on our state's webpage. If you fill out the form, the notification form we talked about, and again, it's www.tinyurl.com forward slash North Bro with the GH at the end vaccine. So again, forward slash North Bro vaccine. And you can click right on those comorbidities and read the list for yourself and make that decision. And I, but, and I can see where this is going to, when you just did, said that, I said, ooh, I can see that that's going to be what a lot of a lot of Liz's volunteers are doing is trying to translate that to to the all the people who are my age and a little bit older who are like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how is how is that again? Now, by the way, once again, so this is just trivia. So two core morbidities. That's if any you know any age under seventy five, but with two, it isn't like you're sixty five and older and you've got no. two core morbidities. So yeah. it's anybody. I Wow, so yep. that could that could this could be a really huge phase. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, but it could also, you know, in terms of cutting the death rate, you know, it could really cut into that, right? That's a great. Yep. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So can can you can you just talk a few minutes about? Uh, I'm just curious if you know my my asking how otherwise how are things going? You know, I know we're in this. You know, the Bidens keep saying, you know, we're you know we're in this dark night, but the dawn is coming. You know. How dark is the night here? Is the in, in terms of your numbers in North Pro and how is all that working out? Yeah, so numbers, um, obviously we're still in the surge, you know, as you probably heard the Baker Polito administration extended some of those 25 occupancy restrictions. You know, we're still limited at 10 person gatherings in homes or 25 outside, and that's both at personal residence and even you know at some of those uh, venues as well. So we're we're limited to gatherings, and that's because the numbers are still high. So we're averaging, let's say, eight to ten cases a day. I think in our most recent weekly case counts, you know, we were in the 60, 70 mark. So we're not at that peak. We, we Northboro was just blown. I was blown away with the numbers in Northboro that week following Thanksgiving. That was over 93 cases in a single week, with the week ending on the Sunday. We're not. We're not back up to that. I'm hoping we're through our holiday surge um, and the numbers are going to start coming down. But let's say we, we were at, you know, even if we're at 60, 70 cases a week back in the summer, we had one or two. So, I mean, it's just much more prevalent, high viral load in comparison to where we've been. So, you know, people need to be really vigilant right now, you know think back to you know what we did earlier on if you can have your groceries delivered have your groceries delivered like really reduce risk you know there's certain things you can't avoid the trip to the doctor's office but you know five five trips back and forth to the grocery store and and popping in to get that coffee and all those sort of things this may not be the time to do that um, until things get a little better um, and so yeah our case counts are, are high they're coming down but um you know, right now, those restrictions I talked about that were extended, that's all currently through January 24th. So we're still really trying to lock down, minimizing non-essential travel, um, et cetera. But that said, don't miss your doctor's appointment. Right. Yeah. They're, they're paying attention. They're, they're yeah. test, they're there, you know, and you gotta, don't die of something else. You know, that'd be a mm -hmm. sad obituary, you know, died from avoiding COVID, you know, yeah. what was the good of that, right? It's kind and of just, yeah. yeah, and the good news is I think doctors' offices are so good with their screenings now, right? We've learned a lot. They're screening, you know, for procedures, et cetera. People are required to test beforehand. So we're in much better shape than we were in the spring and knowing how to really limit the spread. 
um, and to you know more safely have appointments. So again, um, like you said, Arthur, yeah, don't delay care. Um, but it's all those non-essential things that you can try to avoid, right? Or, or what we want to try to avoid, which is you know gatherings with friends indoors, you know without masks. You know if you're used to your coffee hour and we all sit around the coffee table, you know that we shouldn't be doing that right now. Like the mixing of households indoors um, without masks is not recommended. The, the guys at the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> shouldn't be at the Dunkin' Donuts right now. I'm, boy, it's a sad thing. <laughs> Use the drive-through. <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't be hanging around at the cafe at the senior center. You know, you no, just you just not can't. yet. <laughs> not quite yet. So when are you thinking, Liz? When are you, when are you thinking you'll you, that 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 you know based on all of this? Are you, when is when is your fondest dream for when you can have that first thing at the senior center? Or the, that kind of a, huge welcome back celebration. Yeah. <laughs> Late summer. Yeah. Fall. I'm watching Kristen's face to see the reaction. <laughs> but, you know, what do you, and Kristen, what do you think? Because obviously, you know, you're talking with all those other health junkies, right? Right now, <laughs> right? We're all kind of, you know, everybody's yeah. doing this because, you know, you feel it. You can just feel it. People yeah. like, it's like when you think of how many people are going to go on a trip in 2022, it's going to be the most astonishing thing <laughs> around the world, right? So, but, so you must be talking about this. You know, what, do you, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, I think... What we're hearing at the national level, right, with the experts, we need to get to this herd immunity. And herd immunity is when you get, let's say, approximately 80% of the population vaccinated. So we're so lucky that the Pfizer-Moderna vaccine um, is as effective as it is against um, stopping the spread or, or stopping illness, you know, with a 95, it's 95% effective. Um, and that's great. But, you know, we still, we have this whole group of everybody 16 and under, you know, all those kids running around. And they're not approved for the vaccine yet. The vaccine's only been tested on, you know, and it's only approved for um, the older ages. So we're, we're it's going to be a delay of getting through the oh. tests and the trials for children. And so that's why this is going to take longer than we think. You know, if, if we were approved for kids and we had the vaccine, we could get our whole community done in three weeks, right? And then, uh, you know, and then the second dose. I mean, but it's it's that limitation, you know, um, and not the important thing is not everybody's going to want to take it right away. Right. That's going to delay our recovery. It's important for people to get the vaccine early, um, as early as possible when you fall into your category and, and realizing that, you know, children are going to be a long way off until that's approved. So, you know, they're hopeful sometimes summer or something like that. We might be at that approval process. So we, we have some time to go. But, you know, that that threshold is that 80 percent vaccination. And right now you can't even offer it to kids because it's not approved. So mm -hmm. does Massachusetts have enough vaccines, Kristen? You know, the state's been trying to really ramp up the communication on vaccine. They made a whole vaccine dashboard to tell you the truth. So if you go to like the uh, mass.gov COVID, they do have a whole dashboard. I haven't even had time to dig into it yet, you know, where they're trying to say how many are administered. I know setting up the first responder clinics, um, I think there were at least 85 statewide. So many like ours, regional where towns came together. It was more work than we all anticipated, right? More approvals, the time. And I think it's really, it's just working all those kinks out of the system. Once the approvals are there and you have a system and you know how to collect the data, I mean, this will run like a flu clinic. It's just that first step, right? Most of these sites don't have the refrigeration, right? They don't, they're not used to ha having to log, like flu vaccine is much easier to hold. It has less requirements. And so while we have nurses who are trained, et cetera, there's that infrastructure, it's building up the infrastructure and, and the additional paperwork that's required. So, um, you know, I can't speak to the amount. I think we all have this, you know, underlying feeling more is out there. We just need to get it to us locally, right? Get it to the providers. Um, I think that's coming. I think it will move quickly. It's just, you know, um, it's, it's setting up that process that's been taking time. So can, one of the, I think one of the many silver linings to all of this, and I think there ha there are a lot, right? Is that at the end of the day, everybody's going to know you, Kristen, and everybody <laughs> in every one of these towns is going to know that you know health is he you can't be healthy unless there's public health, right? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I you I can't be healthy if my neighbor's not healthy, you know, yep. and that and that th there's a real role, uh, you know. This I, I remember reading when this was starting off, you know, and people were just bemoaning 
how public health had been so shrunk over the last decade, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, public health, you know, why do we need that? But now it's like everybody gets it, right? And, yeah. and, and it, it, you know, it, it'll be a wonderful thing if as a result of all of this, you know, the in, in I don't want to say if Kristen necessarily gets a raise in the next town meeting, you know, <laughs> although this would be a good year to ask for one, you know, you, you know if you're thinking about a, you know, a shot here, right? But I think it's just a really wonderful thing to think this is just a crucial piece of what the town does, you know, and of what and of what you can and if and and, and you just makes you feel better about living in a town that's really kind of got that down. So yeah. it's 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 really an amazing thing. So Kristen, I know that my see my job and as as you, as Liz knows is I provide comic relief and also be timekeeper. And I'm watching my our clock and realizing that we're 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 about we're about we're about done. Um, so I was wondering if Liz got any, any final questions before we wrap up. How do people contact you, Kristen, if they have questions? Sure. No, and I just want to tell everyone, please call the health department. You know, Liz, you probably find the most rewarding part of your job is actually talking to real people on the phone and, mm -hmm. and helping them through. So, you know, we field questions every day from businesses or, you know, if you go to a store and you saw something that you felt was unsafe and they weren't following COVID practices, you would report that to the health department. If you found out, you know, I was with my cousin uh, Susie on Saturday. She just called me. She says she has COVID. What am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to notify? Um, those are the questions we're here to help you um, answer. You're not alone. So the easiest way to get a hold of us, it's 508-393-5009. Um, and if you can't remember that, call the Senior Center because they have our contact <laughs> information. You may have them on speed dial and they'll help to put you in contact. Um, so please don't hesitate. You know, the rewarding part is making contact with um, all of our residents and no questions too small. We have uh, two great administrative assistants that support the health department, Kitty and Angie, and um, and they're great with residents and, and we're happy to point you in the right direction. Well, this was pretty great. Kristen, thanks a million. Liz, yet again, right? This is just a, this is just a great okay. timing. Just great, you know, and to the extent that we can be, you know, I, th I think and this gets to the core of what the show is supposed to be about. You know, it's really kind of helping seniors figure out a lot of this stuff, you know, even seniors that may be kind of technologically challenged, you know, to be just be able to click on the TV and see Kristen and get this kind of information. So this is just really great. Th thanks a million, Christian. Thank you, Liz, once again for, for doing this. Folks, I hope you, you found this useful. Once again, just the, the best, stay safe, pay attention. Get on that list, get your vaccine, it's almost over. And you get to give Liz Tridiak a hug at the end of the day. Thank you all for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. Thank you very much.